This is the official interior design of SpaceX's Starship HLS, the spacecraft that's set to carry humans back to the moon. Now, if it looks a little familiar, that's because it is. We've seen glimpses of similar concepts before in earlier SpaceX renderings and prototypes. But this time it's different. So why did SpaceX settle on this version instead of the ones we've seen in the past? Well, the answer comes down to one key idea, comfort. For years, SpaceX has been refining the Starship HLS design through testing feedback and iteration. And now what we're looking at isn't just a spacecraft, it's a home in space built for astronauts to live and work on the lunar surface. So how did we get here? And what exactly changed to make the interior look like it does today? Let's find out in today's Tech Map episode. The first time we ever got a look at Starship HLS was back in April 2021. That was when SpaceX officially landed the NASA contract for the Artemis missions. The design at the time looked like your typical Starship, just without the aerodynamic flaps or the heat shield tiles. Instead, it came with a few unique touches, things like a crew elevator and solar panels wrapped around the nose. But one big mystery still lingered. What does it actually look like inside? For a while, that question didn't have an answer. Over the years, though, things started to come into focus. Then, in late October 2025, SpaceX dropped what is the official design concept for NASA, and this time we finally got a good look within. The new update shows a single expansive cabin, the main pressurized living and working space for the crew. It's huge, about 600 cubic meters in volume. To put that in perspective, that's roughly two-thirds of the entire pressurized volume of the International Space Station, and more than 130 times what the Apollo Lunar Module offered. That kind of space opens up a lot of possibilities room for supplies, bunks, a command and control station, and still plenty of room to move around. That brings us to SpaceX's first true HLS prototype, the one that went viral back in November 2024. You might remember the photos from Starbase. This full-scale mock-up sat there for over a year, built to demonstrate the basic functionality of a few HLS systems. Think of it as a subscale test version, not meant to fly, but to show how the real thing might work. In general, both this early prototype and the latest design share a similar layout, two decks connected by an elevator. But beyond that, the differences are striking. Inside the subscale HLS prototype, the interior feels cramped. The space is divided into two small rooms, each one packed with exposed cables, machinery, and narrow walkways. Even the ladder between decks is tight and mechanical, more like a maintenance bay than a crew habitat. The new design, on the other hand, feels completely different. It's open clean and far more refined. The walls curve smoothly with the shape of the rocket, and most of the equipment and storage are tucked away behind sleek panels. Instead of feeling crowded, the cabin feels spacious. A wide central staircase connects the decks, giving astronauts plenty of room to move and making the interior feel much larger than before. Then there are the windows, big, wide views, looking straight out onto the moon. They're not just for the view either. They help with visibility during landing. Still, there's something poetic about being able to look out at the lunar surface from your cabin window. The lighting, too, has been rethought. It's soft-built right into the walls and casts a gentle glow without harsh shadows. The furniture and seating hug the walls, leaving the center space clear perfect for astronauts to float and work freely in zero gravity. So why do the prototype and the official Starship HLS look so different? It all comes down to what the prototype actually was. The mock-up was built inside Starship S-22, a vehicle originally designed to hold fuel tanks, not people. That meant the internal volume was limited from the start. 
The structure was narrow, and a lot of the available space was taken up by plumbing and equipment. In other words, it was never meant to be comfortable, just functional. SpaceX built it as a test bed, a way to study different layouts, test crew operations, and evaluate ergonomics in a realistic environment. After collecting feedback from NASA and astronaut crews, SpaceX went back to the drawing board. The result was a full redesign, this time optimized from the start to be a livable space. The improvements focus on comfort, efficiency, and accessibility, all while keeping the same mission goals intact. It's a great example of SpaceX's design philosophy in action build test, improve polish, and then do it all over again. Now beyond its open interior, which offers roughly 600 cubic meters of pressurized space, the Starship HLS also includes two dual airlocks for surface exploration. If you're not familiar with the term, an airlock is essentially a small chamber that acts as a door between the spacecraft's pressurized interior and the vacuum of space or the lunar surface. It's what allows astronauts to step outside safely without losing cabin pressure. Each airlock has a volume of about 13 cubic meters, more than double the space astronauts had inside the Apollo Lunar Module. That extra room means more flexibility for preparing spacewalks, storing suits, and managing equipment before heading out onto the moon. Even though most of the interior has been completely redesigned, one part seems to have stayed consistent, the airlock. Back in early June 2024, SpaceX released a photo of a Starship HLS airlock mock-up. And interestingly, it looks almost identical to what we're seeing in the latest design. As you can see, the walls curve a little, and the floor is dark and tough, probably to handle any dirt or scratches. The ceiling is smooth and rounded, helping keep the air inside safe and secure. This room is all about helping astronauts get in and out of their spacesuits before stepping onto the moon. The walls are covered with white, hexagon-shaped pads that look like a honeycomb. These soft pads are there to protect the astronauts' bulky spacesuits if they bump into the walls. It's like having cushions to avoid accidents. The rest of the wall is smooth and white, with some lines and holes where parts can be added or fixed later. This shows it's a test version that can be improved. On one side, there's a big black fabric door that looks like a strong curtain with straps. This is just a temporary setup for testing. It's not the real door they'll use in space. The door is kind of low, so astronauts have to bend to go through it, which some people think isn't safe and might change later. The frame around it is made of metal, hinting that the latest version will have a tough sealed hatch to keep air in or out. On the opposite wall, there's a cool control panel with a screen that tilts up. The screen shows a picture of the starship landing on the moon with stars in the background pretty awesome. Around the screen are buttons, including two talk buttons to talk to others and spots to plug in microphones. There are also some red bordered buttons that might be for letting air out of the room called depressurization when it's time to go outside. Below the screen, there's a little shelf maybe for tools or stuff astronauts need. One side wall probably has machines and wires hidden inside to control the air pressure and keep everything working. You can see some seams and brackets, and there's a small vent near the floor to move air around. This part is like the brain of the room, making sure it's safe for astronauts. What's it for? This mock-up was tested in June 2024 at SpaceX's headquarters, where astronauts wore special Axiom EMU spacesuits and practiced moving around. The soft walls and big space helped them test if they could work easily. Since it's just a test, the door and some parts might get upgraded, maybe a taller door or better lights to make it safer and more comfortable. What might come next? In the future, they could add a stronger door, more lights, and maybe handles to help astronauts move. The control panel might get a touchscreen, 
and the hidden machines could get bigger to support more stuff, like connecting to a space station. So this airlock is like a high-tech dressing room for astronauts with soft walls, a temporary door, a cool control panel, and some hidden gadgets. It's still a work in progress, but it's super exciting because it's helping us get ready to go back to the moon. So what about you? Are you as excited as I am about the latest Starship HLS design? It's amazing to see how far SpaceX has come from that early testbed inside Starship S-22 to what could soon be the vehicle that carries humans back to the moon. I'd love to hear what you think, so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. The interior may be what captures everyone's attention, but behind that sleek design lies something much bigger, a massive engineering effort that stretches across every part of SpaceX. Because to get humans back to the moon, it's not just about building the cabin, it's about building the entire system that can take them there. To bring Americans back to the moon, SpaceX is developing Starship along two parallel paths. The first focuses on the core Starship system itself, the spacecraft, its boosters, and the massive infrastructure that supports it, covering over 90% of the total system cost. The second path is what NASA calls HLS. It builds on the same hardware as the standard Starship, but adapts it for one purpose landing astronauts on the moon and bringing them safely back. Both of these development paths rely on SpaceX's massive private investment and together, they're what make the whole lunar plan possible. Since Starship's very first flight in April 2023, SpaceX has been moving fast, running an aggressive test campaign to push the vehicle further with each launch. That approach has already paid off. The program has seen multiple successful ascents of the world's most powerful rocket, plus launches, catches, and reuses of the booster all essential steps toward achieving a rapid launch cadence for lunar missions. SpaceX has even managed to transfer around 5 metric tons of cryogenic propellant in orbit, a first-of-its-kind demonstration that paves the way for full-scale fuel transfers in deep space. Add to that successful in-space restarts of the Raptor engines, crucial for lunar maneuvers, and controlled re-entries through Earth's atmosphere, and it's clear that Starship is quickly maturing into the vehicle SpaceX needs to reach the moon and beyond.